Hello, and welcome to the GTS Business Conference 2017. My name is Pet McDonald from Watch a Played, and I'm here with... Hunter from Steve Jackson Games. And you've brought a game to show me, the Munchkin Collectible Card Game. Yep, this is the Munchkin Collectible Card Game. It's coming out February 2018, uh, designed by a couple guys you might know, Eric Klein, Kevin Wilson, who knows? I might have heard of them. Yeah, they're, they're uh, very, very renowned. I love all their games. Most people like a lot of their games. And we pretty much went to them and said, what would you make if you made a Munchkin game? Like, how would you make it? And they made the Munchkin Collectible Card Game. It's a two-player Munchkin experience. But it's, a, it's set in the Munchkin universe, but it's not Munchkin. Uh, so the way it plays is you have a hero that you start with, and you, you can build your deck around that hero. So I've got the Centaur Warrior, for example. And I'm the Dwarf Cleric. You are the Dwarf Cleric, and we each have like a different flavor to us. So my uh, Centaur Warrior is more about being aggressive, yours is about being more defensive. Uh, we have a built-in ability here. Mine says, Zap, deal one damage to target hero or monster. Zapping in this game, turning it sideways. You may have seen that before, because this is a... Uh, similar to how Munchkin is a parody of RPGs, Munchkin collectible card games, a parody of collectible card of games. Course. So you build your deck around that. Your deck is, consists of uh, cards that are based around that class, so you'll notice they'll match the color. And the art will be similar because we actually have different artists doing each of the classes. Oh yes, that's and perfect. Then you have gray cards that are neutral, which will go in every deck, and they have art from John Kavalik. So he's kind of in everybody's stuff. So uh, <laughs> there's a few different card types, so let's, uh, let's do a sample. We'll just do a little bit of a turn here. Yeah, for sure. A couple turns. So you draw six from the top. And just to start off, these components aren't final, uh, but they are kind of indicative of what it'll be. These cards are very similar to what they're going to look like. Uh, so we have a few different types of cards here, you'll notice. Uh, so I've got locations, which uh, are, they go into play, so let's go ahead and play one. Uh, we'll say I go first for this game. We Do normally it. roll a die, but uh, first player gets one gold. Second player gets two gold to kind of compensate them Ooh. for going second. Uh, so I'm going to do a few things here. So I'm going to play a land card, so I have the Inhumane Society. It's a, it's a location. I said land card because you have a card in your hand called Land, <laughs> yeah. which is a reference of if you've ever played uh, certain collectible card games. But we have... Which we won't name we here. We won't name here. We won't <laughs> name them. They might do other things other than zapping. But we have a location. It's the Inhumane Society. It makes our monsters cheaper. The cool thing with locations, you can only have one in play, but it affects both of us. So in this case, mm. my monster cheaper, but so are yours. Uh, so we've got that. Uh, I've got a weapon here. So we have a couple of loots. These are actually uh, loot weapons. Uh, loot can be weapons, armor, stuff like that. Uh, in this game, rather than being like, I'm not attacking you with weapons, I'm defending myself from what you're attacking me with. So usually you're sending monsters at people. I like this, the 11 foot pole. The 11 foot pole. And that's the one I'm actually gonna play. So right now, you start at level one. Yep. Uh, and these stars represent what you can have per level. You're not actually paying gold for these, you're just make you can't have more than your level worth. So I'm only level one, so I can put the 11 foot pole into play, but I can't play the Jigsaw of Blades. Remember that? So two. that exactly. We've got some guys here called allies. Allies can kind of jump in front of attacks for us. They have a life total, they might have an effect. In this case, it's the body guard. I'm not going to play him just yet, but it's good to have in your back pocket because they can take all the damage, even if they die and they won't, nothing will hit you instead. So. And so you just play during your turn or could you play them during my turn? Allies you can only play during your turn, so they okay. kind of just stay in play. Uh, but what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, try to attack you now. So okay. any of these cards that I've shown in my hand, I can theoretically play face down and put some amount of gold next to them. And you have to determine if you want to, how you want to defend yourself. Right now, you don't have anything in play, but you do have the ability to run away because you always have the ability to run away. Yep. Running away would just be automatic and you, would just, you wouldn't get to see what you ran away from, but you'd get away from it. So I'm gonna send this out here with one gold on it. We know that my monster, that monsters right now cost one less to recruit. So that could be a two cost. Could be a two cost, we don't know. But you do have your run away, uh, you don't have any weapons right now, and you do also have the dwarf's ability that prevents one damage. So theoretically, if you get hit too hard, you might be able to reduce the damage a little bit. Now, so what's the, um, the strategy behind running away here? You only have one creature, so if I run away, I probably should. You could, so what happens is, if you run away from this, this goes away, it goes in what's called the stash. Yep. I get my gold back, since I didn't actually reveal it. So if I have more monsters in man, I could then play them out and still do the same thing over and over. Because there's no limit to how much you can play on the turn. It's just limited by how much gold you have. So basically, I'm, I'm kind of calling your bluff on whether exactly. I want to run away from this or maybe or, or, save it for another. Or maybe save it for another. Or this could be something that's not even a monster. Who knows? So would you like to see it? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to run. You can hit okay. me. Uh, well, unfortunately, I was bluffing. This is Bodyguard. He was an ally, but allies you recruit differently. So this actually was just a pure bluff. I was hoping that he'd use his runaway for the turn, which is not great. Uh, so since I cheated, 
I, I do get the gold back because it wasn't something I could actually recruit. That gold cost is a little bit different for And then allies. I get gold? Uh, no, what happens oh. is I take a damage oh. <laughs> for cheating. So I've actually, I've cheated. Sometimes it's worth it though. If you had wasted your runaway on that, if, if, you, call, if you called the bluff, sometimes you can commit a weapon to that. Like if you zap a weapon to defend yourself, that's worth taking the damage sometimes. Yeah. But I'm still gonna try this and put the gold here. Would you like to run away or would you like to take that? I'm gonna say that you're bluffing again. I'm not gonna run. Well, unfortunately this time I wasn't bluffing. Oh. So I did, since I revealed it, it is a monster. Everything's qualified here. No, I didn't cheat. This gold finally does go away. So Perfect. that's gone. Uh, it costs one less because the Inhumane Society. Yep. And so this is where the power and toughness. So we have a two power and a three life. So the power is how much damage they're dealing to you. The life is if you were able to essentially stop, so if you are able to deal damage to them, say with weapons. Yeah. If you can kill them, they won't do their damage to you. And so I can tap my cleric in order to zap prevent them. a damage. Just <laughs> zap my cleric. Yes. Uh, so what's cool with this is if the defender has a location in play, it gains a power you don't have a location, but uh, so it's just a two power and you, you prevented one of the damage. Perfect. So you only take one. I have used this monster, but it also goes over to the stash. This isn't permanently gone. At the beginning of my next turn, I'll be able to get stuff back from the stash into my hand. Okay. So you get to keep reusing uh, monsters. Uh, you might get your stuff that you've cheated with back. Uh, you know I now have a gazebo for future turns, theoretically, if you can Sometimes you can deal damage to monsters that are over in the stash, kind of get rid of them before they come back to their opponent's hand. Yeah. But you know I have a gazebo, so it's kind of that, got that element of bluffing where you know what I have, you know that I can play it, but. Will I play it? Who knows? Will you? So hmm. at, at the end of my turn, I'll level up. I'm not going to play anything else. So whoop, wrong way. Level up to two. You get gold up to your level, so I have zero, so I go up to two. And then it will be your turn. So at the beginning of your turn, you'll have the reckoning steps and the early turn stuff. So you'll actually unzap your hero. If you'd used your runaway, you'd flip it over here, and you draw a card. Ba -ba -ba -ba. And for my turn, I have a land or a location to play as well. Yes. The it's land. My favorite. So now you can uh, play your, if you have any weapons that are your level one currently, if you have like an 11 foot pole of your own, or if you have. Oh right, and these don't, uh, these don't cost me anything. So yes, I will. You've got a weapon now to defend yourself with, as, as do I. Yep. And now you can start recruiting your monsters if you want. Uh, again, remember, mine makes it to where they're all one less. So you can actually maybe recruit more than one. Uh, however you want to do that. Okay, cool. And you just put amount of gold next to it equal to what you think. Okay, so yep. I am going to try to defend myself. So I'm going to zap the 11 foot pole and commit it to that fight. Yep. And then you flip it over. Oh, that's tough. Okay, the ferrous oxide monster. Oh, this is a fun one. At the end of this fight, squish target committed weapon. So I do, I do end up stopping you because I kill you, but... Uh, but I'm going to stop that. Oh, no, you do. <laughs> I, I forgot about your ability. So, you yep. so he's zapped his cleric. He's prevented the damage that my 11 foot pole did. So not only does the ferrous oxide monster stay alive, you have two damage here. I only have one defense. So it's going to hit you for one? It's going to hit me for one. Perfect. So and his ability gets to destroy and the other pole. You, you got it. The Ferris Oxide monster is really brutal. So, so that, uh, unlike the other ones that just went away, that's your discard gone. pile. That's, that's discard gone. pile. It is gone. Perfect. It is out of play. So the Ferris Oxide monster did a ton of work. He paid one gold for that. Yep. This goes over to your stash as well. So he'll be coming back to you next turn. And you still have another gold to play with if you think you want to play something else. Uh, I might see if you bluff me out here. Boop. Okay, you gotta put any gold next to that? No. No gold next to that, no. huh? No, because you reduce these by one. Yeah, you do. <laughs> That's a, uh, I'm gonna run away from that. All right. Um, I actually think I will be done here. Okay, cool. So we are going to. Uh, you mentioned I get up to, so I level up to level two. And you would gain one gold. Since because it goes up to the two. Up to the two, exactly. Perfect. So I can, you can't store and, and bank your money. Yeah. At the end of your turn though, I will do this. I'm gonna zap my hero, which her ability is to do just a direct damage. So I'm just gonna zap you to do some damage. Our abilities kind of counter each other a little bit. A little bit, yeah. yeah. They, they work against each other a little bit. Uh, right now yours is doing a little more than mine. Uh, so at the end of my turn, I would flip over my runaway token. I would get to draw my card and I'd get my stash back. So you know that I have a gazebo at least, and a bod E guard. Uh, so I am still level two. I'm gonna play a chainsaw, because I am level two now. Uh, and we are gonna try this for one. Oh, uh, the land that I put in, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah everyone gets a gold. But let me get you an extra gold. So we, we are just gonna get another gold. Yep, you get, a, you get a bonus, so you're at three gold now. Nice. And I'm at three gold. But I'm still gonna play this guy for one. That doesn't really, that won't change him. Uh, would you like to run away, or would you like to put your 11 foot pole up to the test? That's tempting. Uh, no, I'm gonna take it. Oh, and this guy's tapped. Yeah, I, yeah, because yeah. he stayed there. Uh, I was 
I was <laughs> I get my gold back. I'm not a good bluffer, apparently. I'm usually pretty good at this. I thought I was gonna What is this? Uh, so I take a damage. A discount cudgel. Yeah, so discount cudgel would have actually been good to play. It's a, it's a zero level weapon that does one damage, so it's not huge, it's not great on defense, but it also has the chance of breaking every time you use it. That's so, funny. So I might it might get squished. So we're gonna do this and put one gold next to it. Oh man. I think this is the real one, I'm gonna run. <laughs> You're good at calling bluffs. <laughs> And I'm gonna play the bodyguard. Okay. So this ally, uh, you noticed before when I defended with my 11 foot pole, some of the damage got through because I didn't block it all. Even though he only has two life, he takes everything. So you can kind of throw him in, some, in front of something big. He'll yeah. take all the hits for you. But unfortunately, that's my turn. I don't get anything cool there. I didn't get damage through. I get a gold. Now I notice I uh, ran out of cards. Normally there'd be a deck out. We're doing some. We're doing just because smaller. It's, okay. Usually it's forty card decks. These are kind Perfect. of demo decks for us. Uh, we each get uh, an extra, extra money because of the land. Here you are. That's not a good sign for me. That sounds like there might be something bad coming at me. I will do this with a dollar. Okay. I'm gonna send the chainsaw of bloody dismemberment. Let's see what we do here. So you reveal that. It was nothing. It was nothing. I bluffed you. I, I, I wouldn't think you would send nothing at me like that. That so you do take one damage for bluffing, uh, but right. that's okay. That was a good bluff. That was a really good bluff because that's a pretty pretty strong little weapon we had that you got out of the way. I will play this and uh, no money. I'm gonna take that one. Let's see what it is. Ooh, it is a lame oh, goblin. I hate the lame goblin. So I will take one damage, for, or I'll, excuse me, I'll take two damage from the lame goblin. So we'll just swap that out with a five, and then you actually take one damage. I do. It's when it's when he's hired. It's called hiring in this game. You're hiring the monster, and paying them, or in his case, not paying them. <laughs> and uh, he does he does one damage to you. So that goes over to your stash. Uh, that's not great for me, but we will see. Let's see. Still got still got four gold because he's free. Uh, I have, I'm just going to show that I have my own chainsaw here. Oh, cool. So uh, you are only level two, though, right now. So you'd have to replace that weapon. Oh. It has to add up to the total level. Uh, does this discard it or send it It just to gets my... discarded. That one would just be straight up discarded. Okay. I'm not going to do that yet. I'm okay. not going to do that for now. That's fair. I wouldn't be that scared of me either. <laughs> uh, I will put this out with a dollar. Um, I'm going to send in Bod E Guard. Let's see what happens. I am bluffing again. No! How is it only when I'm bluffing? So you get the you get a damage for bluffing, but you've you've now completely other than my runaway, you've you've gotten rid of my defenses. Boop. Nothing. And that one is with two dollars. Uh, you have how, you have a few cards left, so I think you're bluffing. Let's see it. I am not bluffing. Not I off. actually paid extra for it. You did, you did. You paid extra just to show so up. So these just get tossed? Yep, they just get tossed. There, and there are actually some pretty cool monsters that if you pay extra for, you might get additional effects for them, like maybe drawing okay. a card or they'll get bonus strength. So I actually take just two damage straight to the face because I didn't run away. I didn't commit a weapon though, fortunately, so the Ferris Oxide does not get my weapon. We're pretty close in life here now. Yeah, it's not great. And I will play this with two money. This one I'm going to run away from because I'm yeah, frightened. Good idea. <laughs> I felt, I felt like that was coming. So, you got anything else for me? No, that is it. Okay, uh, so you would, again, you'd level up to level, in this case, level three, and then go up and get your gold, which you'd only get one. Uh, and that's really the, the gist of the game. Maybe come back to my turn, I'd unzap all my cool weapons and loot, get my, get my stash back, get one card off the top, and you get, get to go at it again, so. Yeah, really, we just continue this way until one of us is uh, maimed. Yes, very maimed. And as you can see, it kind of escalates. As we get to further turns, the monsters start to get stronger. All the bluffs become more important because you have limited resources and you have big... You, that's what you ran away from. Yeah, the budget Sasquatch would have <laughs> would have uh, tore me a new one. That, that's a, that was a good runaway. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you said it's two players. Uh, about how long does it take to play? Honestly, like 20, 30 minutes. I believe on the time of the box is technically 40 minutes, but once you get, once you learn the rules, you get into it a little bit. Uh, you go to level, you, there, there are 10 levels on here, you just kind of max out at 10, but I usually see the games go to around, around eight-ish in that range, somewhere in that. Uh, depends on the type of deck, though. There's a lot of different strategies in it, so obviously there's the straight up sending monsters at your opponents, but each of the classes play a little bit differently. I mentioned these two, but we also have, there's wizard, bard, ranger, and uh, rogue, uh, rogue, rogue thief. So when is this coming out? When's it available? Uh, so Munchkin Collectible Card Game will be out the first sets in uh, 
February 2018 okay. uh, for that. And then we'll have expansions coming out after that. We have the uh, Desolation of Blarg is coming out in May. Blarg. Blarg, yes. <laughs> and uh, we've got uh, Fashion Furious coming out later. I believe it's August after that. Fashion Furious? Fashion Furious. Love it. So. And uh, yeah, so the, the base set comes with the, all the characters you mentioned? Yes, it has, uh, it, there are two, uh, two deck starter packs. So if you buy one starter, you get two fully playable 40 card decks with two heroes, plus a die, plus all the counters, plus an extra booster to get you kind of oh. going in that. 20 bucks, 19.95. So, do you have uh, any of the boosters? Uh, yeah, actually, let's let's take a look at one. So, this is just again, that's a mock up, but it gives you an idea of kind of like the layout. You're getting a lot of different hero, uh, different variety of hero cards. Uh, there's a rare card, you've got a few uncommon cards, like it's three uncommons and then a bunch of commons. Uh, the difference being that some of the packs will have more higher rarity stuff, but in this game, it's not really about. Are you trying to get the rarest of the rare to be the strongest deck? Some of the rare yeah. cards and the higher, even higher rarities aren't even amazing. They're just fun because they're different art. Some of the stuff's from the starters, but you'll see a ton of new stuff in these booster packs. There's just so many cards, it's hard to cover them all. But it has a good mix from all the different classes. There's also going to be alternate art uh, hero cards and things like that in there that you might just to, just to make your deck a little bit more unique. Perfect. Well, thanks for showing me the game. If anyone has any questions, just Put a question in the comment section below and I'll answer you as soon as possible. But otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.